All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of the Business Development TV TT. I got it right this time, live. <laughs> and today with us, so Bernadette Chidley on the road, true entrepreneur style, laptop lifestyle. <laughs> and Hillary, the marketing mom. And today we've got a special guest, Debbie Jolie, who is also a digital marketing strategist in the sphere of social media. So today we are coming to you talking about again branding all right we've been this month talking about branding and the power of your brand but today we're going to be taking a different angle in terms of understanding how do you infuse that no like trust factor because you know sometimes when it, when you're in person you you're in the person shop or whatever you could develop those relationships but how do you do that from a digital standpoint? So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, Bernie, I may have to mute you because we're hearing lots of feedback. All right. So when you're ready to talk, I'll unmute you. All right. I'll raise my hand and then you unmute me. Yes. Yes, all right. I will. <laughs> all right. Okay. So maybe it's not Bernie. But anyway, no problem. So. <laughs> One of the first things, you know, that I want to ask Debbie and your your take on it is really, um, what is somebody's, what, what online is the biggest challenge, right? You think that, okay, you get online and it's like you've got the world of people. So what's the biggest challenge in, you know, getting people to focus on that, you know, everybody isn't your your audience you want to right. talk a little bit about that yes sure because i think um i think initially people are when i speak to entrepreneurs or when, when i've spoken to a lot of entrepreneurs and i ask them who who are your clients and and many say not all but many say well everybody <laughs> and uh, and i have to get them into a mindset that that is perhaps one of the original, original areas that they need to sort of look, look at. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is your client. And there's a pool, a wealth of, 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 of customers that you can tap into. But you really need to dig down deep and look at who is your ideal client. So many uh, marketing gurus talk about develop, developing an ideal client, a buyer persona um your target market it's all the same thing identifying those target group of customers who will purchase from you mm -hmm. what is your what is your solution or product or service that you provide them and how are we matching those things together and that is the starting point you have to know who you're serving before you can begin to create communication messages online right right definitely so is there so just a, a just a follow-up on that is there a process that you use then that helps your clients do get through that that um find their their ideal customer well and then it goes right back to um what are they offering if you mm -hmm. are service based or you're selling products identify what is your product or service offering and who will potentially buy it i spoke to um a good friend of mine who actually has a bakery and i mentioned to her one of her target audience is really working mothers who really mm. don't have time to come home and bake bread i mean i really don't know when last i bake bread so, <laughs> so the idea is you, you know but he last you bake me. bread Sunday, 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 See? Sunday. Well, I yes. had been, I had homemade bread made for me. <laughs> me I'm too, actually. <laughs> exactly. Me too. I'll make some cookies this week before it closes off. But no, but and that's part of what I told her about her messaging. You, you are also catering to that busy woman who mm -hmm. has a partner, has kids, is working, and on their way from um, work to home, they're stopping off to buy this bread. And part of your messaging should be directed towards that specific person. That specific person, very well. Yes, definitely. So digitally, all right, um, one of the things that 
getting people to like you. First of all, yeah. getting people to know you. What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it's from a digital standpoint. Um, this is this is also a long road, just like building a relationship offline or building a relationship personally or building a relationship professionally. It takes time. People need to get to know you, to like you, and to trust you offline. It's the same thing online. And what do we need to do? We have to show our audience particular value. They have to see the value that we bring in terms of um, the, the things we communicate, the things we communicate about our business, the things we communicate about ourselves, um, how we interact, how, how we deal with clients. So um, I say it's the same thing that you're doing off, you're offline, you're mimicking it online. Don't expect to jump online and immediately be able to make, you know, thousands of dollars. Um, this is a long road process, which means you have to show up every day, put out content every day, offer value to your ideal client every day, and that's how they begin to see you, know you, like you, trust you. Yes, Vinny, I saw your hand go up. Yes. <laughs> Permission to speak, miss? All right. Um, <laughs> the, yes, the thing about that is that um, people think uh, and confuse marketing and advertising. Uh, and I keep telling people, it says marketing and advertising is two different things. So I want mm -hmm. to know, Debbie, if you agree with this. Now, you spoke about the long road to getting the sales. Um, so how does organic, because that, I mean, the non-digital business owner understands the word organic and they, un well, sorry, not understand. They hear the word organic and mm -hmm. they hear the word paid advertising, advertising on Facebook, boosting on Facebook, advertising on Google, on, on Google PPC. So the question is, how do you use organic and how do you use paid in terms of getting the sale? Right. Okay. So I believe in a totally integrated approach. So I don't tell client clients right away, jump on board and, and, and put out ads, right? I, again, you have to start to create content where people are seeing you. So you're creating blog posts, you're creating regular content, you're putting out videos, you're partaking in web in webinars, you're doing you're doing things where you're networking or, or online and you are showing up, which is more organic. To me, paid advertising, Google ads, and these types of things enhance you and, and really allows you to reach your client. Um, faster and allows your business to scale faster, but faster. you can't do one without the other. Mm -hmm. There must be a, a, a background of information because when a client see the ad and they click on the ad, they then going to start to go through your content. So there must be something there, right? They're yeah. going to start to go, go through your Facebook page. They're mm -hmm. going to start to go mm -hmm. through your website. They're going to because they want to get to know you right yes this they've seen the ad but they want to get to know you so i think both need to be done together um and uh, I, I totally believe in both because the long haul is important to get persons to know you but the paid advertising really helps to increase your visibility helps to improve your branding and just helps you to reach your clients, you know, um, better. And of course, to help you scale a lot faster okay. once you have that budget. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is the, uh, what I hear with advertising is scaling. And you know, what's interesting, Bernie, it's interesting. You asked that, and you said that you think people understand the difference between organic and paid. Really, I don't know if people truly understand it because last night I was in a group and somebody put a poll, asked a question about other people doing advertising and a lady came in and commented and she said i advertise on facebook all the time and it's free mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in other words she's doing facebook post organic yes. post yes. but she's saying she's advertising for free yes. yep. so not even understanding the difference in the, the full marketing 
spectrum advertising is this small piece that requires money it does yes. <laughs> it could never be free but yes. what she's doing is building the organic base right and her organic posting may be getting her a lot of traction because she's probably been doing it for a long time and that's why she's seeing results and calling it advertising because she's seeing the, the financial benefit of it but she's probably been doing organic for a very long time and has built up a base has built up a, a no like and trust factor with her audience so she doesn't necessarily need to pour on the gasoline as i like to call it with advertising yes right yes so i want to jump into um you know one thing that i think we've we've touched on it we we've touched on it in terms of how the organic works right um you you said the word and this is something for businesses to truly understand that long haul approach um you can't turn on the tap turn off the tap turn on it like we don't like running water right nobody likes running water is wasting water but when it comes to digital marketing and your brand you can't turn off your brand right right <laughs> so it when it comes to your branding consistency is key and i think that's something that a lot of people drop the ball on they think that okay i'll run a brand campaign for mm -hmm. two weeks mm -hmm. and then then christmas time they need sales and then they they open up another campaign what's right. your yeah how i mean yes it's easy to tell people to be consistent but what are some ways to help people with that consistency especially business owners right now okay well that that reminds me a little bit of something i mentioned to burn that as well which is digital media is getting a lot of um, a lot of criticism and they want to, as, as business owners, they always want to validate it. But traditional media, they would have spent thousands of dollars on big banners and putting out news, ads in the newspaper, radio, and they just, they, they haven't asked about the return. And to me, digital media, one, allows you to reach you, the widest audience and doesn't take much in terms of in terms of time and in terms of creating of content. And so my thing is really to kind of to, to really enlighten the entrepreneur and to enlighten the business, the business owner in that saying, there's so much, there's so much noise out there, and you need to be relevant. And in order to be relevant, you need to show up consistently. So not just today and turn it off tomorrow. Your the the I think the premise was a a, um, a brand needs needs to be seen at least twelve times before the client actually begins to recall the brand and and show interest in the brand. So if you're turning that on and off once or twice a year, I, I I'm not seeing that you're going to get the traction. And I mean just just for me. I made up my mind about three, four years ago, you're going to put out con content consistently. And my content is out there every single day. Um, and people say, and, and what's so ironic is that persons who perhaps don't even engage in the content at all will send me a direct message and say, I've been seeing your content. I really love your content. And I'm like, okay. So people are seeing me that are not, uh, that are not even engaging. Mm -hmm. So, so there is a there 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 are clients. There is a whole ocean of clients out there, and the only way to reach them is to be consistent. And I don't think it's hard. Dig, digital mark marketing has a lot of shared scheduling tools. You you could put out content on, on a regular basis without feeling overwhelmed, and still being able to reach your audience and hit the KPIs you want to hit definitely yeah bernie you have anything to say about that <laughs> you're good you're good you agree <laughs> yeah yeah yes. yeah it's all about am i am i unmuted no oh, yes, yes you, you are, are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay okay yeah um anyway um yes it's all about the kpis um to me i think digging in deeper into 
um, the business owners and the entrepreneurs is that they are paying attention to the wrong KPIs. Um, again, they use the terminology KPI and like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I ordered my website. Um, so I'm like, so what's the bounce rate? Uh, I don't know. And, and they're like, okay, so do you have lots of visitors? Yes, yes, thousands of visitors every month. So what's your conversion rate? And they're like, uh, I don't know. So how can you fix your yes. website if you don't yeah. know where your visitor is sticking? So it's great that you turn on your Google Analytics because then when you, Debbie and Hillary and I show up to help them look at the right KPIs, um, we can say, um, let's fix this number and get this number either down or you get it up. Up, because yes. um, different numbers work differently. Yeah, exactly. like, for instance, for uh, a bounce rate, a bounce rate for um, a, a restaurant is great because Google measures when somebody comes to your page and they leave, that's a bounce rate. They didn't go to another page and yeah. whatever. So if your website is about putting in orders, and you make it really easy for people to put in an order, then you're gonna have a high bounce rate, right? Because that's just how it measures. So different bounce rate means different things according to the according the to the business. Yeah, and they also have to understand in terms of organic. Um, when your competition is high, your organic has to be even more gamified. Yeah, it has to be more playful. Mm -hmm. So what works for Harry mm -hmm. is not work is not gonna work for Sally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, so you yeah, know, that, that's my take on on KPIs and, and organic. You know, one thing that um, I I heard an example recently of a restaurant, as you mentioned, restaurant. It, it reminded me, and this mm -hmm. ties back to that. Um, it ties back to the the no like trust factor that companies build over time with consistency in this restaurant um obviously they had to close down because of covid but they had a very active um facebook and instagram in terms of they used to be doing a lot of things with the with their customers online right so they would be sharing content consistently so what they did was when they had to close on their Facebook pages and on their Instagram pages, what they actually did was say, order from us and we'll show you your order as we're cooking it, right? Wow. So because they already had that audience, they had consistently been doing their social media. So all they had to do now was take a situation and order right here and we will be live streaming. They set up a 24 hour live stream into wow. their kitchen, into their kitchen. And as orders came in, they would take like a little sign and say, okay, um, Sally, your order is being prepared now. Here's the, and they were literally doing live stream of the orders. And guess what happened? That's mm -hmm. total engagement. Yeah. Right. They did not miss a beat while other stores put in a sign out on their window we are open they didn't miss a beat their orders kept coming in their customers kept getting their orders and they did not lose anything because they had to close their restaurant and that is the yeah. you know the impact now they could they have just turned the switch on that without having done what you know putting out the content consistently previously no they would not have been able to just flip the switch like that right? right so they and their customers knew them they, they they knew the faces of the the um so yes maybe the content previous to covid that was caused different. the shutdown was different but they had already developed that no like and trust factor trust. right so it was like the customers were like yeah i want to see my order being cooked now on facebook yeah. it yeah. was exciting for them yeah. you know and they so, get a little plug too because every time they're saying this this is sally's order from santa mm -hmm. cruz they exactly. get a little plug, so they're very much they're, 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 they're totally engaged Engage, yep they're totally engaged and they're like look come and order and they go and tell their friends right yep 
And that's the impact of no like and trust, especially from the older. Bernie, I remember a, a, almost a year ago when we were talking about this no like and trust from the from the olden times, I guess, when you you go into the bank and the bank manager knows your name or things like that, that relationship, you have to figure out a way to do that online. You know, yeah. that building that relationship so that the customer knows, like all of those customers for that restaurant, they knew who the owner was, they knew the face, they knew the the different kitchen chef people or whatever you call them, right? <laughs> Sous chef, or, right? But they knew them they had already developed that relationship with them they liked the restaurant because they kept coming back so now during crisis they're able to just be like yeah well we we still got a way to order our favorite right? yeah 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 and that's well, it for some for many businesses who um built their organizational relationship mm -hmm. they definitely prosper but there are always those that will eventually, because of technology, because of changes in customer behavior, it's a reality that your customer is no longer going to need you. Yeah. And, and, and so therefore, businesses need to, uh, how you would say, have their ears on the ground. Mm -hmm. They need to be able to be listening to see when their customer behavior is changing. Absolutely. And, and that's where, I mean, that that's the sad part that businesses take. And when I say businesses, I talk about the big brands in Toronto and Tobago. They always, um, this is what we're saying today, this is what we're saying today, they put out their post, they put out their post, but nobody's listening, nobody's engaging with, with the audience, with the customer when they come in and says, you know, I have a question. And that there's nothing in there to allow the customer to easily interact and engage and ask a question and get answers from the company. And I do have a big shout out to Caribbean Airlines. I was like, oh my gosh, you actually called me. Um, <laughs> what happened is that I'm getting these emails because I booked before yes. the shutdown, before the yes. lockdown yep. happened. Yep. And of course, we all had to go online and do yep. all this to me, to me to save the ticket. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, I would have loved it if Caribbean Airlines had given me back my money, but that's not their policy. So I okay. accepted it. I knew that's what they were going to do. But anyway, I'm getting emails from them all the time telling me, um, rebook your ticket, rebook your ticket. I'm like, so I finally got fed up of the email and it says, I responded. I expecting it to go to a no reply um, email, right? Yeah. I was expecting another email coming back saying we don't answer emails to this um, to this email account. But anyway, I wrote to them and I told them I don't know when borders are opening. I don't know what the flying protocols are. It makes no sense flying anywhere for less than two weeks. So if I have to sit on the ground for two weeks and then fly back, it makes no sense traveling. Yes. So yes. I said, that, that makes no sense. I have no idea when to rebook. So why you keep telling me to rebook, rebook? And I don't know these answers. So I got a phone call from them and they were going to give me a one year, which is their normal policy, one year to rebook the ticket. And I'm like... That still don't make sense because I can only fly for two weeks and I, and I only have the Easter holidays. Easter holidays is two weeks and I go there, sit for two weeks and, you know, I have to come back home. So it's just me paying you to, to, to put me in a hotel to fly me back home. So I've just spent whatever for, you know, I'm like, no, no that's not going to work. So they said, okay, well, they'll give me a voucher till September. I was like, I'm so happy. So glad that you called me. So I thank Caribbean I'm Airlines. Going, I'm going to try it. That's now because I'm in the same position. Mm -hmm. I right, there go, you go. I booked to go Miami in June, in the beginning of June. And well, I had to cancel it. Yeah. Um, I'm getting all the emails, all the e e emails. And their email did, did say a year. And I'm saying, oh gosh, a year from now in June. I still ain't even sure if that might be okay. So yeah. I, I, I'll do that. <laughs> there you go. What and the whoever part. else is listening. Thank you, Caribbean Airlines, for yeah, calling because email is not working. You yeah, know exactly. Yes, 
the, the market is changing. Well, Debbie, I want to thank you very much for joining us today on this, um, our business development, TVTT. You see, if I say it fast, I get it. <laughs> and I was going to say, um, leave the stammering to Debbie, not you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> what was the brand again? I'm sorry, the stammering. The stammering communicator. communicator. I'll tell All you right. very, very, very quickly. I, I stuttered. Mm -hmm terribly as a child couldn't string string two words together and um fast forward to when i got in my 20s i got into lecturing and i think that helped a whole lot with the the, the stutter i think if persons are around me long enough they'll still hear it but i put it as part of my branding because i couldn't be a person that like marketing and the arts and not be able to command the voice so it's it's part of this this whole story of them yeah. Well, wonderful. Well, it was a pleasure having you on today. I Thank must you so say. much. Yes. And uh, we will, um, you know, we'll be here next, what's today? Thursday. Next Thursday. Sorry, my brain is <laughs> being lost today. All right. So have a great day, everyone. Again, Debbie, thanks for, for joining Bernadette and I um, on this series. And for those who want to reach out to any of us, please do so. Oops, we've lost Bernie. Anyway, um, so that is it for today. All right. Okay, Have a great bye one. Bye. Talk to okay, you soon. Bye-bye. Take care.